Hello everyone, today we will be discussing about fibroid uterus. Uh, there are chances one question can come on this topic. Okay, it's a very easy topic. So let's discuss it quickly. Uh, and all those guys who you are watching me, uh, please like, share and subscribe my channel. It will help me a lot in my teaching profession. Okay, so let's start it. So first of all, uh, uh, what is fibroid uterus we should know it so uh, fibroid uterus means um, fibroid uterus means uh, uh, the tumor of the smooth muscle cell of the uterus so what is smooth muscle cell you all know in the uterus the myometrium is there so when that smooth muscle cell of the myometrium it becomes tumorous it keeps on growing and growing so then uh, makes a growth it is known as the fibroid uterus or leomyoma what is leomyoma leo means smooth myo means muscle and oma means tumor so benign smooth muscle cell tumor of the uh, uh, uterus is known as leomyoma leomyoma is the another name okay so it's the most common tumor of the female its incidence is 30 percent uh, it is incidence is 30 percent so question has come on fmg which is the most common tumor of all they have given the four names and in that option was their cancer cervix because cancer cervix is a malignant tumor and this is a benign and this is found in 30 percent of the female so this is most common tumor okay so uh, there are different type of uh, tumors so as we have discussed that most the all these tumors uh, first of all you should know they are intramural in origin because they are tumor of the smooth muscle cell so all the fibroids are intramural in nature uh, so in origin so these are the four, uh, four different type of uh, fibroid first let's see the one which is in the muscle is known as the intramural the one which is uh, uh, in uh, in more in the mucosa is known as submucosal the one which is more in the serosa is known as the subserosal the one which is and the growth of the cervix is known as cervical fibroid or cervical leomyoma so all these tumors they are intramural in origin and most common tumor among all this is intramural fibroid okay is the intramural fibroid is the most common fibroid okay so let's start it uh, let's go to the symptoms what are the symptoms so the patient who is having fibroid that growth in the myometrium so there will be minorachia because on that fibroid there will be the overgrowth of the endometrium so it will lead to minorachia excessive bleeding and then there is infertility now if the fibroid comes in the path of the uh, if the fibroid comes in the path of the uh, uh, yeah, of the gametes or uh, in the path of the sperm or in the ova then it will not let the fertilization to occur and the patient will suffer from infertility for example if the fib fibroid is at the cornual end now it will not let the uh, sperm to enter and ova to come out so it will lead to infertility the pain is very rare in fibroid it is mostly when the fibroid is such a large and it compresses the other organs then pain will be there or if there is degeneration or torsion so usually the pain is not a symptom of the patients of fibroid and uh, the pain is only felt when this fibroid compress the other organ or when there is degeneration or when there is torsion okay now next is bowel and bladder symptoms the bowel and bladder symptoms will be there if the fibroid is compressing the bowel and the bladder so these are the four symptoms once again manorrhagia is the most common symptom infertility and pain infertility pain and bowel and bladder uh, symptoms they are some rare symptoms but they do occur okay now let's discuss about degeneration of fibroid why there is degeneration of the fibroid because the blood supply to the fibroid is from periphery to center so when uh, the fibroid becomes large in size then what happens the blood supply doesn't go into the center part so the center 
part start becoming uh, starts decaying or degenerating okay so as blood supply is only at the periphery so usually large size fibroid it goes into degeneration okay most common is the hyaline degeneration and most common in the pregnancy is the red degeneration it occurs in the second trimester and it is because the venous supply in the venous supply of the fibroid there is thrombosis okay patient has pain and patient has fever this this fibroids should not be treated by surgery the only and only conservative management should be done okay iv fluids and analgesics can be given to help the patient okay so conservative management means no surgery only medical drugs so iv fluid and analgesics can be given okay so once again uh, about the degeneration of the fibroid degeneration of the fibroid is there because the blood supply does not reach the center and blood supply uh, in a large fibroid the center part because blood supply is not coming to the center it starts decaying the most common degeneration is the hyaline degeneration the center part gets hyaline like changes hyaline tissue over there in the center in the pregnancy the most common degeneration is the red degeneration in which the veins they have the thrombosis and and it usually occurs in the second trimester and uh, the patient fe feels pain patient feels fever in spite of all these things, the, there should not be any surgery done. Only conservative management is to be done. IV fluid and analgesics can be given. Okay. So, that was about the degeneration of the fibroid. Now, let's study how we will diagnose. Now, you all know that patient will come with this and the symptoms. Okay. And first of all, in the diagnosis, though it is not written here, I will write it now okay that on the pv on the pv the uterus is enlarged the uterus is enlarged and irregular because irregular or nodular okay why it is so because fibroids they are nodular growth because the fibroids they are nodular growth so whenever we will do PV sometimes on the PA also the fibroid is such large that is such large or such giant that we can feel it on PA also but on PV definitely we can feel the every fibroid so in on PV the uterus gets enlarged because because of the fibroid and it is irregularly enlarged and we see we feel the nodular appearance on the PV of the fibroid. The ultrasound is most commonly done, and for but the med best is MRI for the fibroid uterus. The treatment of the fibroid uterus is of uh, surgery is much much more be better than medical treatment. So uh, uh, we uh, just removing of the fibroid is known as myomectomy. Myomectomy is a, a procedure where lot of blood loss is there. So it is only done if the female is infertile or if the female is less than 40 years. If the female is more than 40 years, then please do hysterectomy as myomectomy is a life treatment surgery. Okay, so if the fibroid, we can remove the submucous fibroid by hysteroscope because hysteroscope will approach it. We can remove the lep, uh, subserous fibroid by laparoscope and by open myomectomy, we can remove every type of fibroid. Okay, once again, the hysteroscopic the hysteroscopic fibroid the uh, sorry the hysteroscopically we can remove the submucous fibroid because they are easily approachable by laparoscopy we can remove the subserous fibroid because they are in the peritoneal cavity subserous fibroid by open myomectomy we can remove each and every type of fibroid because when we have opened it then we can approach to the fibroid in one or the other way 
okay myomectomy is a very blood lossing surgery so it is not done with cesarean it is not that we have opened the peritoneal cavity in the cesarean and we can do the myomectomy because there is a lot of blood loss in the myomectomy so we are not going to do the myomectomy with cesarean as in cesarean the uterus is very very muscular okay only pedunculated subserous fibroid they can be removed and this was once asked in the exam which type of fibroid can be removed with cesarean pedunculated subserous fibroid they can be removed with cesarean okay so if the family is completed and age is more than 40 years so you are going to prefer hysterectomy in that patient once the question come that there was the 14 weeks fibroid and the patient has no complaints so here i would like to tell you many times like this patients come and they don't know even that there was fibroid they were getting ultrasound done for some other problem for uh, gallbladder stone or other thing and they come to know that coincidental finding come there is fibroid so if fibroid is not giving you any symptom there is no need to remove the fibroid okay so only the symptoms have to be treated because fibroid symptomatically the surgery myomectomy has to be done because fibroid do reoccur okay the only solution of the fibroid is the only solution of the fibroid is hysterectomy okay complete solution the medical management though is not so effective but still it can be given the sats and tranexamic acid it is it is the uh, first drug of choice here i would like to tell you that first it was thought that only and only estrogen uh, hyper estrogenism is responsible for the fibroid uterus but now they say that estrogen and progesterone both receptors are present on the fibroid so it is a new change so you should know question can come on this that estrogen and progesterone receptors both are estrogen and progesterone receptors both are present in the fibroid nasads and tranexamic acid can decrease the bleeding or the menorrhagia caused by the fibroid and they're the first line drug of choice combined oral contraceptive as you all know we have studied that it decreases the bleeding so it decreases the fibroids bleeding too long acting progesterone on it to cause endometrial atrophy so it will not let the fibroid to fibroid patient to bleed anti progesterone which are tapered mifepristone and unipristal can be given and if we will stop the gnrh release then of course there will be uh, no menses no periods and no bleeding so it can also help so nasad stranexamic acid is a first line drug of choice combined oral contraceptive pill long acting progesterone anti progesterone tablet mifepristone ulipristone can be given and the drugs which stops the gnrh release for example gnrh analogs the continuous form continuous form will only in spite of the fact that gnrh are it is a gnrh analog but when we will give it in the continuous form it will stop the gnrh to release because the natural release of the gnrh is a pulsatile release but when we will stop the gn when but when we will give it in continuous form it will stop the gnrh to release so the trade name for the gnrh continuous form is luprolide and nephrilin gnrh antagonist is citrotide and yes danazol it also stops the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone so this was about the uh, medical management and these are the newer techniques uh, the newer techniques which are available these days for fibroid is uae and uh, hifu or you can say focused ultrasound or laser myomectomy here focus beams we give with the help of the ultrasound probe and the fibroid it gets under uh, it starts decaying okay so the newer techniques are uae that is a uterine artery embolization hifu focus ultrasound or laser myomectomy that's all about fibroid see you soon in the next video till then goodbye please subscribe like and share my channel as it will help me in my teaching journey a lot thank you